We will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. The silence is broken. Newt Gingrich makes shocking reveal. He just said three simple words that will end Trump Russia investigation for good. Newt Gingrich has one justifiable reason motivation behind why you shouldn't put stock in the free Russia investigation. Keep in mind a couple of things. The investigation's head, Robert Mueller, should be nonpartisan. What's more, in fact, when he was first contracted, everybody applauded him for being quite recently that. So it's a little odd that his activities are currently indicating support to Democrats. Which might be the reason Gingrich is stating that his investigation is rigged. Via MSN, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, a key ally to President Trump, said this morning, that the ongoing investigation into the Russian intertwining of the election, led by Special Advisor Robert Mueller, is a rigged game for its lack of pro-Trump attorneys on the case. While Gingrich said he would not recommend that Mr. Trump should fire Mueller, he questioned the investigation's impartiality since Mueller has so far hired four Democratic attorneys. He apparently could not find a single pro-Trump attorney to hire, and I just think that's a rigged game, and I think it's a mistake to pretend this is going to be some neutral investigation, Gingrich said. Gingrich is right. Mueller has the ability to enlist his own investigative group. Furthermore, the main individuals he's employing all originate from the Democrats. New knows a rodent when he notices one. The most exceedingly awful piece of everything is that it's a change of heart. Gingrich at first had a favorable opinion of Mueller. As did most men and ladies in Congress. It's simply subsequent to watching Mueller's activities that he is starting to have questions. Asked if he thought the attorneys were anti-Trump, Gingrich responded, well all four gave money to the Democrats, and later laughed off a suggestion that they were the best attorneys Mueller could find. You're suggesting that in the whole country there are no Republican attorneys that Mueller could have hired, he added, I do not give the benefit of the doubt to someone who could only hire Democrats but claims we should trust him. Libs and Congress have your run-of-the-mill reaction dash Gingrich is just trying to sow distrust in the investigation, blah, blah, blah. But Gingrich has a straightforward approach to gauge transparency, and he explained it, let's just have transparency. Could we have as many pro-Trump lawyers as we have anti-Trump lawyers? Something discloses to me that Mueller wouldn't accept Gingrich's recommendation. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. M. S. Game Changing Democrats' summer vacation plans are ruined, look what Republicans are about to cancel. President Trump's promise to make America great again requires diligent work. He can't do it without anyone else's help. He needs the help of each American and each official in Congress. Numerous Republicans need to enable him to satisfy his promises. Be that as it may, liberals are pushing back, declining to collaborate, regardless of the possibility that it implies we endure. What's more, now the Republicans' most recent intent to complete things is doubtless to unsettle the quills of heavy hitter liberals. Via Daily Caller, according to The Hill, some Republicans now believe that getting everything done on time with a 30-day recess coming up would be almost impossible. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell wants a vote on health care reform by July 4, but the fight with Democrats over the bill has left the annual budget resolution, needed for tax reform and appropriations legislation, up in the air. More importantly, if the Senate Republicans pass a 2018 budget resolution, then their health care bill would only require a simple majority vote. If Republicans vote on the budget resolution without their health care bill as part of it, they will need 60 votes to pass the legislation. Alaska Republican Senator Dan Sullivan told The Hill he urged leaders of his conference to cancel the August recess. I think absolutely we should truncate or cancel recess. We have a huge agenda. I think we can do a lot of it done, but what we do not have is time said Sullivan. We can make more time. God forbid our officials really carry out their employment. Republicans are battling to settle our broken system and all liberals can consider is their opportunity off. Run of the mill. Donald Trump promised to drain the corrupt swamp of Washington.
This is recently the sort of corruption he was discussing. Leaders chose to represent our nation are excessively worried about their opportunity off them to complete anything. It requires a considerable amount of push to draft enactment, refine it, and get it voted on. That implies time. However, Democrats would rather disregard the problems that need to be addressed of this nation, than give up their getaways. Why are these individuals in control once more? Why are we enduring their childishness? Ample opportunity has already passed the American individuals expelled these wolves in sheep's clothing and choose genuine leaders to D.C. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. The Daily Call Developing Story Look which U.S. ally just admitted they've been spying on the White House for years. This is terrible. All the discussion, fake news, and build-up around Russian spying and hacking has clouded one vital thing, once, in a while, your genuine foes are covered up on display. Furthermore, nobody presumed this nation would be a foe of the U.S. We should talk spying, each nation does it, and each nation lies about it. It's a given that Russia is keeping an eye on the West and that we are keeping an eye on her. Yet, keeping an eye on partners isn't the same. It's exorbitant, and it can prompt colossal PR issues. Which is additionally expensive. There's a shot you'll be cut off from the other nations in sight to organize, which is additionally exorbitant, better to have others spying for you than yourself. It's a bonder, at that point, that a standout amongst the most monetarily splendid nations on the planet is caught up with keeping an eye on the U.S., its partner, Germany makes them disclose to do. Via conservative tribune, what is perhaps even more troubling, than Russian hacking, are new reports that Germany, an ally of the United States, has allegedly spied on the White House for many years. According to an exclusive report from Der Spiegel, German publication was shown to prove that between 1998 and 2006 German intelligence agency BND spied on hundreds of targets in the United States, ranging from universities to the White House. If this report is true, it is highly unlikely that this spying was an accident since it's been a large part of the federal government. Presently, how about we be blunt it is highly unlikely this was a mishap. Keeping an eye on this scale essentially doesn't occur unless the administration favors it. It likewise demonstrates a touch of something about how liberal the majority of Europe is getting to be. Check the dates, Germany wasn't keeping an eye on the US when Obama was president. It was all W. Bush. Which is to state nothing of the bad faith of Angela Merkel herself who put on a show to be profoundly outraged when Trump proposed that both he and Merkel were being spied upon. Of course, Trump was correct. We simply didn't know how right he was. After all, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel is very famous for her line, spying among friends, that's not done, after it was revealed that the National Security Agency was spying on her. European liberal pomposity, obviously, is appeared to be the deceptive heap of poop that it is. It shouldn't any ask why the vast majority of us just confide in Trump. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Conservative Tribune Look who is being forced to leave Washington, you'll be surprised. With all the show and bits of gossip being spread by the left, it's difficult to comprehend what's truly valid. More awful still, their falsehoods can influence our leaders' capacity to settle on the correct choices for our nation. Be that as it may, it would seem that no less than one leader has fallen, because of fake news. Considering this data originated from anonymous sources, gave by such fake news destinations as BuzzFeed we may need to scrutinize its legitimacy. Liberal news outlets have been working extra minutes to concoct this Russian conspiracy story, in light of only bits of gossip. They have been making a regrettable campaign to stain the president, with zero confirmation to back it up. Via USA Today, Sergei Kislyak, a Russian ambassador to the United States and a key player in his nation's interference in the 2016 elections here, is being recalled by his government according to a report released Sunday. 
Citing three unnamed sources, BuzzFeed News reported that Kislyak is scheduled to leave Washington next month, following a July 11th going-away party for him at the Street Regis Hotel, just two blocks from the White House. Kislyak, 66, was reported to be heading to New York to lead Russian delegation to the United Nations. His return to Russia will mark the end of his tenure tenure as Russia's top diplomat to the United States and makes him another victim of growing controversy over Russian activity. They have declined to accept the consequences of the election and are utilizing Russia as a substitute. In any case, that exclusive confuses the genuine issues we have with Russia. More we appear them acting forcefully in the Middle East. It's reasonable they have designs in Syria that reach out past vanquishing ISIS. However our capacity to appropriately stand up to Russia, and ensure they don't assume control Syria, are frustrated by the fake news. BuzzFeed, CNN, The New York Times, and all the rest keep on spreading the falsehoods that Russia undermined our race. That makes it troublesome for our leaders to work with a nation on main problems. Things being what they are, what will be the result? In the event that we keep on listening to and bolster such questionable outlets as BuzzFeed, we are empowering the falsehoods. We will enable the most exceedingly awful of our general public to control the issues. Maybe our association with Russia will turn out to be strained to the point, that we won't have the capacity to prevent them from a full-scale attack on Syria. That will prompt numerous superfluous passings. Be that as it may, at any rate, the liberals will be glad. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. U. S. H. Five million dollars in taxpayer money gone. Americans are in shock. Obama has a considerable measure to be proud with and when his presidential library is at long last paid for by his loving fans, one of his most distinguished accomplishments, almost certainly will be the embarrassingly tremendous number of food stamp beneficiaries that he was so glad to add to the moves of the individuals who live support to grave inside the nanny state. Under the Obama organization, a 32% increase in food stamps beneficiaries was started by an exceptionally liberal mindset that saw 10.7 in person rise from 2009, Obama's first year in office of more than 33M individuals to more than 44M by 2016, Obama's last year in office. By any standard, that is a gigantic disappointment. In any case, by leftist guidelines, that is a gift from above and rates as an achievement few regressives can gloat. All things considered, it's no big surprise that such a variety of qualification leeches have selected to diversion the system, rather than being grateful for its help. Seven ladies from South Carolina and three store proprietors have been gotten and are being indicted for having conferred food stamp fraud from 2014 to 2016 to the tune of $5 million. Vibriette Bart, seven South Carolina women who received food stamps as part of a $5 million food stamp fraud scheme pleaded guilty to defrauding a government of over $20,000 at a store in Rock Hill. A state court judge ruled that women who had pleaded guilty Thursday will be able to avoid jail sentences and probation if they pay back the money by December 31, 2017, the Charlotte Observer reported. The seven women who pleaded guilty, in order of who defrauded the most money for those who defrauded the least amount, include, Jatonica Williams, 31, $5,238 in fraud, Dequita White, 31, $3,070, La Brescia White, $24, $2,962, Shaniza Davis, $36, $2,549, Victoria Sanders, $25, $2,234, Kimberly Johnson, $28, $2,195 in fraud, and Brooke Rogers, $27, $2,134. Johnson entered her guilty plea by the herself, while the other six pleaded guilty in two groups of three. As part of the plea deal, all seven women pleaded guilty to misdemeanor fraud charges and promised to pay the money back in exchange for a 30-day suspended sentence and a two-year probation that will be dismissed if they pay the money back before the end of the year. Jones, 
who prosecutes food stamp fraud cases in South Carolina, said this particular instance of food stamp fraud took place between March 2014 to 2016. He added that the store owners trafficked and exchanged food stamps for cash while the food stamp recipients used their EBT cards to buy prohibited items such as hot food, beer and cigarettes or accepted cash back. Two, the store proprietors have likewise consented to a supplication bargain. On the off chance that they consent to affirm against the ladies, they will be offered decreased sentences on their obligatory five-year jail sentences and in addition consenting to pay back the $5 million. In cases like these, the failures are the American citizens and the individuals who genuinely need the help. I once in a while think about what might happen whether food stamp CBT cards must be utilized at extraordinary stores that would be set up everywhere throughout the nation, keep running by a private company that would deal with the exchanges. EBT card utilization would be very much followed, examined, or more all would not take into consideration a trafficking of the food stamps in light of the fact that the card couldn't be utilized any place else yet the supermarkets. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Briet Bar